RMBL has a superb reputation. It is simply the premier terrestrial field station uh, in the United States and probably in the world. The thing about uh, Gothic and RMBL is it's completely addictive, and even when you go off in other areas with your career, you keep coming back. Well, I've been studying marmots here at the Rocky Mountain Biological Laboratory for 33 years. I came out as a student in 1974, but um, then I couldn't imagine spending my summers anywhere else. It is more than just the beauty. I mean, it's, it's hard to make the ingredients of the place. I think it's a long list. It's definitely the fact that um, there's 150 people or something like that all interested in similar things at different levels. It's not a competitive environment, or I don't find it to be a competitive environment at all. You go on field trips with your teachers and um, have a relationship outside of the class with your professors and your teachers. You do things that normally at home I wouldn't be able to do, like wake up at 4.30 in the morning and go and catch birds and band them. And, um, Plus, I mean, I think that it's special because you play hard and you work hard all the time. This is the experience of a lifetime. It's really a very special place where the focus is biology. By the way, the cook is a genius. <laughs> uh, the, the essence of the place is uh, the finest research and teaching in subalpine ecology and population biology in the world in a setting that's, I think, characterized by a tremendous community spirit, a collegiality, and um, a sense of fun and adventure. RMBL's heaven on earth. Folks that know it just go. Gothic, Colorado was the site of the Rocky Mountain Biological Laboratory. Located at 9,500 feet, high in the West Elk Mountains of South Central Colorado, Gothic was a booming silver mining town in the late 1800s with over 3,000 residents, several saloons, and two hotels. By the turn of the century, the ore had played out and Gothic dissolved into a forgotten ghost town. In 1928, Dr. John C. Johnson, a professor at Western State College, recognized the potential of Gothic as a remote biological field station. Along with several university colleagues, Dr. Johnson purchased the town site for just $200, and the Rocky Mountain Biological Lab was born. Since that time, RMBL has become the leading independent high-altitude biological field station in the United States. For more than 60 years, it has attracted 150 top scientists, researchers, and students from around the world to each summer field session. A few of the historical town structures remain and are used by students and faculty today. Of course, several modern structures have been built over the years for housing, classrooms, laboratories, and offices. Future construction will improve the facilities, but strict limits have been self-imposed by the lab to control growth and blend with the existing surroundings. But the Board of Trustees recognized that, that it was possible to have so many people here at one time that you were diminishing the um, usefulness of the area for education and research. And so they began a master planning process that resulted in, in a statement that we would not grow. And right now um, our upper limit is 150 people and we, were, we are at that for 10 weeks of the summer. We've also put a moratorium on increasing the number of buildings. So whenever we build a new building, we either take one down or what we usually do is renovate a building for a different purpose and then improve housing in return. Um, we're the only community in Gunnison County that's put a, a complete moratorium on growth and has accepted the consequences of that. Uh, we are hoping to improve the quality of the experience here and not the quantity. The dining hall, which in my opinion is the best, uh, serves the best institutional food anywhere in the world. I think that we could open a restaurant up here. Any shish kebabs ready? Yeah, they're all actually pretty much done. What do you think? So they were laying. How's the chicken? It's delicious. It's messy. What is RMBL? It's an education and a research institution. It's uh, chartered by the state of Colorado. It's an independent institution that's not affiliated with any university or other institution. It's governed by its own board of trustees who are elected by a corporation membership. 
People can join the corporation either as professional biologists or as people who are friends and interested in the mission of RMBL and the research and educational mission. The people who are voting members who are professional biologists then elect the trustees who appoint a director who runs the day-to-day -day operation of the lab. The Rocky Mountain Biological Lab's um, entire income comes from the operating fees that we charge for housing, for laboratory rental, um, for dining hall meals, and for use of the field station. In a normal year, the income from operating fees will be about $350,000. And um, if we don't have any emergencies for expenses, our expenses are about $10,000 less than that. Now we have um, nearly $400,000 in endowment funds. And our goal is to increase that to a million dollars so that we can start to take some of the interest from those endowments to help out with our operations. Now this location is absolutely superb. I think that this is, first, first of all, it's the best watered spot in Colorado. Uh, in the United States, it's unique in the sense that uh, you get an Arctic flora and fauna coming down along the mountaintops. You get desert elements coming in from the west. You get southern elements coming up from the south. You get Great Plains elements coming in from the uh, east so that you get an incredible variety uh, of organisms available in a very small area. Well, among other things, it's allowed us to compare all kinds of different groups of organisms and do a wide variety of different kinds of research while being based at a single spot. Essentially, all my global warming research on how ecosystems respond to climate change has been done here at RMBL. The experiment behind me is we set it up four years ago. It's designed to give us a look into the future of how an entire ecosystem will respond to climate change. About 50 years from now, the planet is going to be several degrees hotter and the soils are going to be drier because of the greenhouse effect. We're simulating that and looking at the behavior of the vegetation, of the microbes in the soil, and the um, nutrient cycles in our system, how they all respond to climate change. The most exciting finding is that there is a dramatic positive feedback effect between climate and the ecosystem. I'm interested in studying what marmots say to each other, the meaning of their alarm whistles. Um, some species of marmots have different whistles for different types of predators. They might have one whistle for an eagle or a red-tailed hawk. They might have another whistle for a fox or a wolf. And I'm trying to determine whether yellow-bellied marmots, the marmot that lives in the East River Valley, has different whistles for different sorts of predators. We have something in a trap there. Seems pretty neat trap we have here. First we gave her ear tags. Each tag has a different number on it, and that's her permanent identification as we catch her through the years. And now we're gonna give her uh, a little mark of fur dye, so when field observations are done, we can tell her from the other young. We've long surmised that there are tourists coming to this valley that think all marmots naturally have all these black spots on them, but it's actually just us. I'm just going to give her a little blot head, a little mark right here in between her ear tags. They are cute little things. Anyway, here she goes. Bye, little girl. The nicest part about working here, besides the obvious aesthetics, is its convenience and it's the efficiency of doing research here. My stream site is right outside my cabin door, so there's no commute. I get up and I roll down the hill to the stream, and uh, it's incredibly efficient in terms of data acquisition. So I can get more data in a short space of time here than I ever could in a university setting. 
to me, I think this is the ultimate field station. I'm Kevin Willison. Um, I'm out here at Rumble from the University of Maryland. I'm studying an ant seed predator sunflower relationship, which is what you see going on right here. So, what are you guys doing in there? Mm -hmm. Pollinating. <laughs> We're pollinating, forcing sex between flowers. Mm -hmm. In fact, basically, in this field of pollination biology, the elite of the entire f um, field is basically meeting here every year. And so for me, this is just a fantastic opportunity to talk to these people. And, and they're, they're very open and ready to talk to you. I mean, I spend half of my time just discussing things with people here. All across the country, there are former students at RMBL who now hold uh, faculty positions and, uh, and are recognized uh, uh, scholars. I, I enjoy research and I enjoy uh, including the students in the research, which is the way I look at it. Uh, to me, teaching is students and faculty members uh, facing an unknown problem together. And um, in a sense, they should come in as students and leave as colleagues. And about 60 to 70 percent of my students, my graduate students, I've encountered at biological stations. And that's a great place to uh, find graduate students because you can see them uh, seven days a week eating, uh, playing volleyball. You can see how hard they work and how long they work. And they, you can see how strong their motivation is toward a career in science. Well, the best thing about teaching here at the Rocky Mountain Biological Laboratory is that the uh, students are are excited about learning. Um, they all are come up here because they want to be here. Um, and, and for a teacher, you know, that takes, that's, that's 90 percent of the job. The students are already motivated and so all I have to do is, is uh, dazzle them and uh, they love it. And it's really fun. It's a really fun place to teach. The typical student program would be something like uh, they would take a course on Monday, Tuesday, say for example ornithology. Uh, then Wednesday, Thursday they might take um, a course in uh, restoration ecology. Uh, on top of that, they're um, uh, expected to put in one day a week per class uh, uh, working on an independent project, which uh, you do in conjunction with the professor for each of your classes. And so actually students are working about six days a week. And while that might also sound a little bit uh, austere, it's really not. Um, I think all students really manage to find a lot of time to, to do some hiking and, and some walking around and enjoying things. But uh, at the same time, you have a, a rather intense and, and an effective ed educational program. What's fun is to go out with a professor, see that they understand the animals, the organisms, they have ideas, they curse, they get excited. And I think this is what the field station's about. And for an undergraduate, it's just a superb experience. It's one that for my own undergraduates, I, I always push on them. Don't stay in the university, go out into the field, learn about biology, meet with professors. And I think that's absolutely critical. And that's why I'm here, to get more field experience. It's a nice place because um, at, at our school we get mostly theory, and here we get all field work. And we're out in the field studying different things, quantifying different things, and seeing a lot of the, a lot of the way actual, the actual experiments go. This is really what I want to do with my life. I want to be a field biologist and, and do research. And so to get a chance to experience what it's like when I'm you know, 20 years old is something pretty unusual. I think one of the, the really fun things about working up here is watching students get turned on and enthused about science and about biology. And even more so, or I guess as a part of that, um, I think a lot of students have a perspective on life that changes just from uh, the community structure of RMBL. The educational opportunities are fantastic, uh, but you have a, a very close-knit community which uh, is fun to watch because by the end of the summer I think the students have got a real sense of community and pride and accomplishment at the same time. I, I like the atmosphere in general. Uh, I, I like the climbing, the mountains, and everything, but I think in general yeah, this is the people. Just, the people are the reason I come okay. back. Uh, people here are, are so unique. Dance a little closer to me. Dance a little closer now. Dance a little closer now. It's an enigma. I don't think you can explain it. 
It's, uh, there's just a certain feeling about this place that catches hold of you. And everyone that comes here, whether they come back or not, is deeply affected in one way or another. I don't think there is any explanation for it. It's just, it's just so unique. There is no place like Gothic. I suddenly became enthusiastic about life in general where I was not before. And that's what this place does to you. Anything we're going to do to intelligently uh, manage the resources that are entrusted to us is going to have to come from a sound understanding of how nature works, and that's really what is being studied here at the lab. Listen, people, I'll tell you a story. Rocky Mountain Biological Laboratory. You could study hummingbird physiology or subalpine flowering phenology. Cat genetics may be global warming. You could find it a habit for a bit. Folks that know it just called rumble. Folks that know it just called it The Rocky Mountain Biological Laboratory is an independent field station, not affiliated with any university or other parent institution, and chartered as a 501c3 nonprofit corporation in the state of Colorado. The RMBL provides equal opportunity in education without regard to race, color, national origin, gender, or sexual preference. Listen, people, I'll tell you the story. I want to Rocky Mountain Biological Laboratory. Well, folks that know it, just call it rumble. To half a generation, you could study on the earth as they Just call.